Good evening, Fountain City United Methodist Church and all those that are joining us for our discipleship Bible study as we make our way through the gospel of Mark, just the first chapter. For the next couple of weeks, we, this is the um, halfway point. There's Mark. This is the halfway point. Um, we'll have two more after tonight. And then we'll go into our Lenten studies and we're excited to share those with you as well. There's information on the Facebook and the other places, right, Mark? Absolutely. And there'll be some promos coming out tomorrow or next week. Promos coming next week. A lot of stuff going on. Tomorrow you get to wrestle your children for two more hours <sighs> before they go to school. <laughs> I don't know what is that this is. Is this the grocery stores need the milk and bread money again? Is this, is I that don't that know. Is? I'm going to have to go get some kind of pancake or waffle mix. <laughs> I think we're out. There it goes. And that's what they, no, they like, they like to make breakfast. Oh, they, they do it. Okay. That's good. So, and then I get to clean up. So it's, you know. Fun for all. Um, as we gather together tonight, Seth is not able to be with us, but we are very excited he's getting to spend time with his family that he's not seen in a long time. I was going to say, it's not because of the chocolate-covered cricket. It is. He's sick. He, um, <laughs> he, he got a rare disease, <laughs> not COVID, <laughs> from the chocolate-covered crickets. He did not. <laughs> and by the way, we left those in the church office where people share their snacks um, usually they've been very limited and sealed lately, but we just left them there. I thought Maxine loved them. And nobody has touched them. <laughs> she won't see this video. We, so I think they're going to find the trash can soon. Yeah. Um, so Seth is with his family. We want to be in prayer with him and for him as they have time together this evening. We hope he'll be back next week to join us. We want to give a shout out to the Who Bodies Sunday School class who did some advertising for us this week. And we do hope that y'all have Facebook pages and can tune in when you're able to. And I certainly appreciate that. Did you get the email about yourself today? about myself from the who bodies oh i did yeah yes that was fun I thought that was awesome i like it when other people do the promotion and not me yes so yes, mark, yes. mark knows that i really like that part that's well, a whole we need them to sign on because right now there's only two people watching two people who's watching with us it doesn't say they've not commented the mystery yet. watchers so if you're uh oh we just I lost one <laughs> do you think it's because we got we asked who was watching Come back. i'm sorry so anyway, I said good evening, yeah. everybody, on the comment. So, well, we hopefully. got feedback that people were enjoying their time. We think they're watching them afterwards. So there's Arlene, who bodies rock. See, yes, and, and we you thank need to you. Make a few calls. Thank you, Arlene. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the crickets scared him away. Um, <laughs> We've just tried to make things interesting, y'all. We know you're suffering from being apart, and we are too. So we're just doing the best that we can and still laughing through it. So that's important as well. Um, a couple of things. This Sunday, we are going to have worship like we do, and it'll be on video and live. Live stream. But what's going to happen the next Sunday, Mark? I might just cry. Come on. He might, might do his happy dance. I, I might just cry again. We will be in person February 7th. Okay, good. You get to actually preach to some people sitting in front of you. And see their Instead of that thing right out there. Eyes. <laughs> and um, their just, feedback. Just because you have a mask on doesn't mean you can't say amen or, or make your positive comments. <laughs> um, so we hope that you will join us on February 7th. Go ahead and change your plans. I know we've all gotten used to having Sunday's time off or different things. We haven't, but we yeah, know y'all it, have. It's, it's time. It's time yeah. to kick it back up. So we want to go back. We need fellowship. We yeah. need fellowship. Even though it's six feet apart, we need fellowship. That's right. We can wave at each other. Go online and register. Yes, you do need to go online and register. And if you have trouble with that, call the office number. Yeah. If you have more trouble with that, just come. Yeah. Uh, we'll take your name and number down mm -hmm. just like we always do. So it is a good thing to um, pre-register. We like right. to have a good idea who's 
who might be here so I can arrange the chairs and mm -hmm. make sure. But it's okay if you get up and you decide to come. We just need to get some information when you walk in the door. Yeah. And make sure you have on your masks. Face covering. So we can continue to protect those. Now, if you're if you're at risk or there's some family concerns, please stay at home. We, we love you. We know you're trying to take care of you and your family. And if you're not feeling the best in the world, just stay home. Yeah. Uh, we'll be live on. Yep. Um, we'll be here. Uh, from what I understand, a, a, a lot of this is it starts out feeling like a cold. And mm -hmm. some people, you know, they go cold. <laughs> I've lived 50 years working every day through a cold. Well, if you feel like you have any. <laughs> Give me some Vicks vapor rub yeah. and I'll move on. <laughs> if you feel like you are not your normal yeah. at all, just stay home. Yeah. And you can still see us. We love you okay. too. Well, tonight we are going to look at Mark chapter 1 starting in verse 21. Are you ready to look at this? I'm ready. I took notes today. I'm, I'm usually flying <laughs> by the seat of my pants and reacting to what you say, but tonight I'm loaded. All right. <laughs> my first question to the folks joining us is, how would you describe demons? Whew. I know we don't normally talk about this as much. Um, somebody told me once that I didn't say hell enough in my sermons. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, we're Methodists. We're about grace and love. We do, we do believe in those things. We just try not to uh, focus on them totally, and especially during all these difficult, dark times in the world. Well, I found a writer who says he thinks it's primitive to talk about demons and spirits, and it makes us uncomfortable. I think it does make us uncomfortable because I was, when I was preparing for this lesson and then I got Seth's method message, I was like, oh, of course, Seth's gonna leave us when we're talking about demons, way to go. <laughs> yeah, because invariably talking about demons leads us to that four letter word and it's called evil. True. And yeah. all we gotta do is turn on the news and we see, read the paper yeah. and you see evil. I've experienced evil this week with a friend. Mm -hmm. That was evil. Yeah, one of our, our good journey folks that, we, that helps us worship. So we definitely want to keep them in our prayers. Yes. But what do you all think? How would you describe demons in the Bible to somebody that didn't know or to a younger person, um, to a teenager, to... Um, a younger child, how do you describe this? You know, are we talking about spiritual beings? Are we talking about figures? Are we talking about evil? We could keep all going. All the above. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. I, I think uh, even back then, maybe there were some socioeconomical issues that, like it does now. It, yeah. it, it really wears on people and they, they have depression and anxiety and there's bipolarism mm -hmm. or manic depressive, it used to be called. Back then, that would have been a demon. Right. Some, we know that some of the... Um Some of the mental health concerns back then were considered demons, but we don't consider them that today. No. And no. We, don't, we don't vote for you to not go and get help no, as you please. can do that. Um, and I certainly don't agree with any stigma that comes with that or anything you need to do to help yourself feel better, especially during these times, because there are people that have never suffered with anxiety or depression that are doing that now. Self-care. Yeah. And please know you're not alone and please be in prayer for your pastors. We've had another pastor that committed suicide in West Virginia. And it oh, was, no. it was, you know, there's a lot being put on your church leaders because of missing you all. So we just need to be in prayer for those things. But let me read the scripture. And I have a comment from Arlene. She said, demons are the people, feelings, and things that tempt us. I think that's true. Yeah. So instead of being upset with chocolate, we could say, get back, you demon. Arlene will, Arlene will be okay that I'm responding to. But no, it is it's those things that are keeping us from being who God intends us to be. It are those, it's those things that stand in the way that promote false gospel and um, evilness in the world. So I totally agree with her. I also think, 
I'm very curious about these shows that are on television, these ghost shows. I yeah, think, I think those they're are interesting. Dealing, I think they're potentially dealing with, we wrestle not against principalities and powers. Powers and principalities. Or powers and principalities, but with dark, mm -hmm. darkness. Evil, and darkness. But the darkness does not overcome the light. That no. That's All right. I'm not right. going into the ghost shows though. That, I'm going to stop before we get there. But you always put a stop sign up to me. Those are scary. <laughs> and you know what's even scarier was if you you'd all don't know this. Um, unsolved mysteries. Remember that guy with his voice that would tell you about him? Oh, yes. And I would have nightmares. And I still do if I hear his voice because because Robert of what it would Stack. say later, it was like, tonight, thanks to the shows that we have seen before, this man was caught as he was crawling up the vines of a house and they recognized him from, you know. Yeah. It was just scary. Okay, we're gonna go to Mark we're, chapter one. Let's get into Mark. Verse 21. Now y'all are all gonna send me those memes and stuff about unsolved mysteries, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> they went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him. It always happens. Jesus right. rebuked That's him, right. saying, Keep going. Keep going. Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Now, before we go forward, we need to go back. What was last week? He called his first uh, disciples. disciples. And so, so far in the... Gospel of Mark chapter one, we have seen Jesus's baptism. We've talked about John the Baptist. We've talked about him going out into a land of temptation in the wilderness and then returning and starting his ministry and calling disciples. And then here we are in Mark. Mark picks as the first public act of worship. A good one to go into the synagogues where Jesus will not be welcomed later, where those that are of high authority in the synagogues will be a part of his crucifixion. We're gonna go in there and not only are we gonna go in there and speak with authority, but we're gonna go in and take out unclean spirits. Yeah, yeah. Commentary that I was reading today said, unlike the scribes, Right. Jesus taught with personal authority. How do you? Personal authority. Personal authority. You know, I heard the best explanation of a pastor this week. I was doing um, interviews with local pastors and pastors that are going into ministry. And so we check in with them once or twice a year. And the one when I asked them what their favorite class was, and they were heading in a different route than usually like a preacher on a stage. They were doing other kinds of ministry. They said preaching was their favorite class because the person that taught them made them see preaching as the person that the church body had picked to sit at the foot of Jesus that week. Wow. The person that the church body has selected, has accepted, has put pastor in front of that gets to sit at the feet of Jesus. And that's where your authority and your confidence and your relationship is built to share that with others. Had you heard it that way before? I hadn't. And I, I, hadn't. I think I had, but man, I needed that reminder. 
I, I like that one. My version that I had always heard was that his authority came upon him when he was baptized. The That's Holy true. Spirit. Yes. He said, this is my son. This is my son. Yeah. You have all, now you have all mm-hmm. authority over everything. Yeah. And when pastors, when we are commissioned, when we are ordained, it says, take thou authority. Yeah. And it's not talking the authority from the bishop to them, but it is in some ways, but it's talking the authority that God's giving you to spread the word of God. That's a lot of responsibility. That is a lot of responsibility. And I've been to a couple of ordinations, Mm -hmm. like June 11th. Yeah. And you can feel yeah. when, when they all put their hands on you, mm-hmm. you've been through it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, I just start tingling yeah. to see because you can, oh, you can almost feel the Holy Spirit in the room. Yes. That thick. It's a holy, it's a holy moment and a holy time and it's a time of hope. That, that the church continues on and we get to, to lead and be a part of it. I can't imagine what you, I know that's a, t- a different discussion, but what you're actually, what's going through, or are you able to process that moment? Or do you look back now and go, yes, I can see this now? Well, okay, I'll tell you a short story. Okay. I don't think I've ever told this before, but we're talking about demons, so we can we can talk about this. Um, so when I knelt down to be ordained, and after um, they had laid hands upon me, I stood up, and it's typical that you turn around, and the folks that are allowed on the stage with you are your spouse, which I didn't have one, and um, your two pastors that you pick that have been mentors. So it was my dad and one of my best clergy friends. And then your district superintendent. And so when I turned around and I stood up, um, my dad said I had this look on my face like I had seen something or experienced something. It was just holy. And I hugged the district superintendent instead of my dad or my best friend. (laughs) And my dad said, why did you do that? I said, I didn't see the district superintendent. What I had seen was my uncle who had gone, who had passed on already. He was a United Methodist minister and he had been a district superintendent. And I just reached out to hug him and, and there it was. Wow. And um, it was a holy moment. That's amazing. I must have had a very large impact on your life. He did well, and he did, but it wasn't that we got to spend a lot of time together. It was the stories of his life and what he went through, and the stories my grandmother told. It was his, it was her brother. So, see, they show up in different ways. But to speak with authority, um, Jesus stood and spoke with authority, and he um, offered that as he was removing this demon. The demon cries out and says that Jesus is the Holy One. I always find it interesting. You know what I find interesting? What was he doing there in the first place? The demon or Jesus? No, the demon. Don't you think it's odd to find him in the synagogue? Yes, I think that is odd. Was there not an usher at the door checking the, the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> unclean spirit cards that day? <laughs> Did they take their temperature and ask them the COVID <laughs> questions? Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so... But think about this. When we come into the sanctuary, we bring those with us sometimes, don't we? Yes. The evil that we're battling, the things that are going on with us. Um, on Tuesday nights, we bring the addiction and the temptations that come into this place. And we would not refuse the, no. anybody that walked in. Absolutely not. So. That, de- that demon was exactly where he needed to be. Right. Well, let me say that. <laughs> the, the, right there. The person that he was inhabiting mm-hmm. was the, in the right spot they right. needed to be because they obviously were Right. Do you think that that's that? the example of good and evil, that this person who was consumed by the evil forces... Um, was still able to get to the synagogue. There was still that. So how did the demon get there? The person brought it. Yes. And the demon cried out that Jesus was the Holy One. 
um, the one of God. And the demon left. The, the, that's the part of that text that makes the hair stand up on my, my neck because the demon goes, I know who you are. Yeah. You're the holy one of God. Even the demon knew. When nobody, nobody in that synagogue knew who Jesus was. Right. But he did. And the, so the demon confirmed Jesus's authority. <laughs> and nobody First. went, oh, hang on there, John. I don't know how many people you got in you right now, but <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? You know, he's the Holy, holy one, one of God. Yes. <laughs> but think about it in the gospel of Mark. John the Baptist proclaims that Jesus is who Jesus is. Yes. And God proclaims that Jesus is who Jesus is. And the disciples follow Jesus. But a public proclamation of who Jesus is was by a demon. Yeah. First, besides the baptism. Yes. That's pretty amazing. It is. And, and that's why the hair stands mm -hmm. up on me because um, I've not always been at that spot where I can say, I recognize the no. Lord or I know who you are. Right. And well, and sometimes we, we want to recognize the Lord, but we're so hurt or in pain or focused on something that's difficult. We, we don't see him. I wonder if that's our own, letting our own evilness come through. Let me share this. I, I thought this was very neat from, from what I've read today. This, this person says um, the title, Holy One, is particularly apt mm -hmm. uh, because the Holy Jesus comes to deliver the world from all that is unholy. It isn't Jesus' earthly origin, Nazareth, that troubles the spirit, but Jesus' holiness. Oh, yeah. Jesus is holy and the spirit is unclean. Perhaps the unclean spirit is saying, hey, we operate in different spheres, Jesus. Go back to where you belong and leave us alone. Mm. I don't think that's going to work with Jesus. No, well, no. <laughs> Go back thought, to where you belong. No, I'm about to bring no, no, healing. I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> um, I think that's true. It, you know, that Jesus, the hearers are hearing his authority. The demon is recognizing who he is and that he's able to destroy the evil. Um, we do remember, though, if you, if you have not known this, but it wasn't a compliment that Jesus was from Nazareth. Right. Now, it wasn't. It was like from the least, the last, and the lost place, like from that place. It wasn't a title that you wanted. Right. Like the king of France or something, you know. Yes. That's not what it was. And so... This, we take something humble. But now the people want to go tell everybody about this. People love Would to you not? gossip. What's the difference between gossip and testimony? What do y'all think the difference between gossip and testimony is? I think a firsthand account is testimony. By the time it goes through 10 people, it's gossip. Ooh. Because the story changes. Or is it the intent... Like if it's a testimony, the intent is not to make me look good or you look good, but to make God look good. Yes, that's and exactly what it is. gossip is usually trying to make somebody look bad. It's divisive. Yeah. Yeah. Testimony is uplifting. Yeah. Gossip is divisive. Yeah. yeah. So I think when we say we're sharing information at church, let's make sure it's of a testimonial nature and not of the gossip nature. Yes. Have you seen that happen? I've seen that happen in prayer requests. Well, I want to share this prayer request. And you're like, that's not a prayer. That, that, that's too much information there, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we try to do our best and, and know that God fills in those things. But something that we, we think about. So the unclean spirit recognizes this, but Jesus attempts to curve the spirit's information about his identity and his deeds. Why? Why does Jesus not want his authority and identity to get out into the world? When we did Mark in our discipleship class on Sunday mornings, 
uh, one of the focused stories of Jesus was him turning water into wine. Okay. And the dialogue between him and his mother. Right. It's Can you not imagine time yet. really how that went? Right. Mom. Why are you asking me to Why are you my asking room? me to but, and, and <laughs> it came down to this. Once I do this, I'm off to the cross. It starts. It's beginning. Once I become public with it, my path is leading to the cross. No. And can you imagine him? It, we were doing the humanity of Jesus. Okay. Can you imagine him going, you know, he, yeah. in the garden, he cried. Yes. You know? So as a human, I can imagine him going, ugh, yeah. now? Yeah. You want to start it now? No. So that's, and I think of this story in Mark 2. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. And you, and you think of Jesus' humanity and divinity, how much he carried with him was so bigger than the cross because you know how we can be overwhelmed by the weight of the world? Can you imagine what he was feeling? No, I can't. I, and I can't either. But I know that he was feeling those things for all of us. Um, one explanation of these passages is that Jesus wishes to demonstrate behavior that is humble rather than self-seeking. I think that's true. I think that's true. And if you have a self-seeking yeah. uh, personality or person, um, that's difficult. Of course, it could be more helpful in this day and age because if you want to be on camera and like to be on camera, then... You're good to go, right? <laughs> yes, you are good to I'm go because like she to. is very good on camera. No, I do not like kicking to do and screaming all. till the time I go. Okay, we're live. Yeah, and then she's like, "Okay, let's talk about Jesus." Let's talk about Jesus. That's why we're here. <laughs> Put me aside. Um, but you think about that, and then think about the most humble people you've you've known. Who was the most humble person that you've known? And why would you say they were humble? It would be my father. Okay. But why? Um, because he meant no harm to nobody. That's one of the do no harm, do good, stay in he love with God. He literally didn't have a divisive bone in his body. So if somebody came up to him and was like, this is horrible. I can't believe this is going on in the world. We need to take care of this. Don't you have anything bad to say about this? He would be like. He would break it down. Okay, let's talk about this. Very calm and cool and collected. Yeah. You know, he was quite awesome yeah. in that arena. Now, my mom, on the other hand, was like a, a those little pop-up things on a turkey when the heat gets high enough. <laughs> They pop open to tell you that it's done. Oh, yeah. That's okay. People, we need but them too. But she loved too. people too. She babysit yeah. over 300 children in yeah. her home in 35 years. That's got to be a heart of a, a, I know. Of a saint. We, have, a we need those yeah. people too. So um, humble, you know, I thought about Mother Teresa and her humbleness, um, but she didn't want to be on camera. She didn't want to... Um, be noticed in that way. She just wanted to do what God had called her to do. So I wonder how many times in this day and age our leaders, our faithful people, our teachers, our prophets, our preachers, how they're being judged on worldly attributes instead of godly attributes. Yeah. Um, they're not loud enough. They're not boisterous enough. Well, can you see their spirit? They're calm. They're together. They're leading. Um, and so we're just really thankful for that. Maybe we should reevaluate how we view folks. Speaking, One, speaking of leading, mm -hmm. Mr. Seth Charles just checked in and said, I see you. Hi, Seth. Miss y'all, but have a blessed night. Yes, you avoided the demons. <laughs> I would have loved to have heard him, but maybe we can revisit this again. I think Seth would have a very Seth good would, yeah. point about the and we did touch with CR and and but we we would like to hear what Seth says. We'll bring it up next week. Yeah. Let me see this one other part. One explanation of these passages is that Jesus wishes to demonstrate behavior that is humble. In Jesus' world, people expected a favor to be repaid with a favor. Now wait a minute. In Jesus' world, people expected a favor 
to be paid with a favor. It wasn't even an ask or a, well, if they feel like it, they expected it. I do something for you, you do something for me. A gift by gift. Further, people of high status often sought to make known their status, status through honorific titles. So like holy one could have been considered an honorific title. Jesus, however, avoids both repayment of his gifts and the titles. How many times do we expect a payment for a payment? And as disciples, I think that really hits something on the, on the head there, the nail with the hammer, however you want to say it, but we don't do it because we expect something. We should be doing it because God has called us to do it. Amen. Um, what does that say now about ministry? We do it because God has called us to do it. And I think if you do it the other way, just don't. Yeah. Just don't. It makes it hard. Yeah. For other folks and testimonies there. Hmm. That's tough. Yeah. That's a tough subject. Yeah, because after you... Because as, as, as people, we, we expect that. Yeah. I mean, after you've really given do. and given and given, at some point you hit a wall and say, I've given all of this, why me? Why this? Why this difficulty? Why this hardship? Why this? And what about me? Yeah, what about me? Like that song. Where's my do? You know, <laughs> where, where's yeah. my... That. Yeah. Miss Donna would be happy. I'm quoting a Toby Keith song, I think. It's all about oh, me. It's all about me. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like that song. So, as we go forth this week, what are the things we can take away from this passage? I think we can take away the fact that whatever the evil is out in the world or that's tempting you or with you, that you can um, seek God in all things and seek Jesus and ask for help to have that taken. And if you can't do it alone, to go find another person that will help you. Because sometimes we can't. That's true. It's kind of like the mentor with Celebrate Recovery. Yeah. You, you need a mentor. Yeah. To be successful, you need that person that has walked mm-hmm. through it yeah. and came out on the other side to be able to help you walk through it. Yeah. That's so important. I think the other thing is, is we recognize that Jesus is the Holy One, but through that, it's not the honor that we should be seeking. It should be the grace and love and humbleness that we choose to serve with. So how have we served humbly this week? Or how will we serve humbly? How can we serve humbly? Um, That's what I'm going to take this week. It's hard. This is a hard scripture. Yeah. um, I I like the parts about the authority and where the authority Mm -hmm. comes from. Um, I am a little bit ashamed that the demon knew who he was. Before the others. Before the others did. That's true. Um, But. um, So what happened, I mean, it kind of goes with that. If we don't cry out, if we don't praise God, if we don't sing, if we don't lift up our prayers, even the what will cry out, Mark, come on. The rocks. The rocks are going to cry out. The rocks. So why would we be surprised that a demon did? He was scared. Yeah. Well, but, you know, all those folks in the synagogue, right? They weren't crying out that Jesus was the Holy One and they were impressed. They were just saying, oh, he presented himself with they authority. They were all amazed. Or maybe they weren't. Maybe they were just like, well, look at him. He thinks he's better than all the rest of us. Yeah. He's from Nazareth. He's yeah, who, really not that good. Who is this? Yeah. Why do we, why do we want to listen to him? But we have to sit at the feet of Jesus to know what we're called to do. So how do you sit at the feet of Jesus this week? 
That's something I'm pondering. And I'm sure Mark will ponder it along too. I had um, another thing I wanted to share about, we were talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Um, This devotion said that there was another side to their lack of belief. And they list their devotion to tradition was a problem. Yes, and and ritual, right? Because they it had to be exactly this way. If you didn't do it this way, it wasn't the right way. Which is the only authority they had. That's what he said earlier. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. They didn't have the personal authority relationship with God. They just had. They this just, is how we've this always is how we've done always it. done it. They perceived Jesus's popularity as a threat. Oh yeah, because they were they they thought he had more authority than them. And their personal integrity is questionable. Well, (laughs) yes. (laughs) So they shut their eyes to that which they don't want to see. Which Mm. brings me to a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. Boy, Mark was digging. I I told you, I did my homework this week. Okay, we're going to... three classes of people. Oh, no. It's not good to classify people day in no, this no, day no. and age, this, Mark. This is, this is, you'll understand. Okay. Those who see, those who see when they're shown, mm. and those who do not see even after being shown. We see dimly now what we shall see fully then. I thought that was a great. Yes. I think we've all been all those things at different times. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, yes. Well, I'm going to close us with prayer. And since Mark closed us with his fancy quotes. <laughs> A plus, Mark. A plus. Oh, today. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for tuning in. And if you tune in later on and you want to make a comment, we would surely appreciate it. Um, we certainly loved your comments. Um, that first week about baptism. So I know demons are a different topic, but if you want to share with us, we would greatly appreciate it. Gracious God, we ask that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit upon those that are seeking to be present and to hear your word through this Bible study. Lord, we just ask that we would be able to cry out that Jesus Christ is the Holy One, our Savior, our Redeemer, and that we would be able to humbly serve Jesus in what you are calling us to do. As we continue to see it at the feet of Jesus this week through our prayers and our presence and our gifts and our service and your Holy Word, We ask that you would guide us and sustain us and grant us only the authority through you as your disciples. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, you tell them about staying tuned for next week while I go do the tech stuff. Okay. (laughs) So... Stay tuned for next week. I think Seth is going to be back with us and we will go on to the next section of Mark chapter one, starting in verse 29, I believe. Let me look at my notes. Yes, 29. And if you want to share this with a friend or ask somebody to join us, please do so. We would greatly appreciate it. But just know we're thinking about you. You're not alone. If you need us, reach out to us.